<clears throat> Welcome to another episode of the 12th Step Podcast. This is Gary. And this is Mike. And this is Daniel. Well, gentlemen, we are answering another listener's email today. And this one is rather lengthy and rather heavy. Yes. We are hearing from uh, one of our listeners who identifies themselves as Sam. And I think in the first few lines, it will set the tone. <clears throat> he says, On the brink of losing everything, need help. I have been with my wife for nearly 10 years and married for four. We have a toddler together. About a year ago, she caught me sexting with somebody from Reddit and, I, and was rightfully livid. I spent the following month seeking out therapy attending a few meetings, and doing a little work in the sex addict's workbook. However, I always felt like I could control myself and that treatments were a bit overkill. I was able to continue on this way for six to nine months, but stopped going to meetings, didn't do the book work, and essentially felt like I had beaten it. Eventually I slipped, and once I slipped, I was right back down the rabbit hole. I kept trying to stop, but I fell into a pattern of acting out, uh, acting out for a day or two, stopping for two to six weeks and repeat. Well, my wife just caught me again. She is devastated and I am on the brink of destroying everything I have built over the past decade. I see that I am now powerless to simply, to simply float through life controlling things on my own and I am ready to go through real treatment to maintain my family. There are by, by far the most important thing in my life and to lose them over something so stupid is incomprehensible. Like many, I am feeling massive guilt and shame for my actions and the pain that I have caused, but it has awoken, uh, uh, awoken the seriousness of the situation and I am ready to do the real work to get myself out of this behavioral pattern and save what's most important to me. I'm on day three now and I know that it will be a long road to regain her trust but you can only go one day at a time. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure why I felt the need to reach out to you guys, but any and all help is very much appreciated. I guess it feels good just to put it out into words and own what I have done. Thanks again for any advice, Sam. I want to start. I want to start where he ends. Because okay. I want to address the positive stuff here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know that you two are just chomping at the bit to, to point out the thinking errors and, and some of the other stuff. You're fine. Oh, that, that's there, only but... when I work with you. <laughs> <laughs> saving that for me. <laughs> Sam, they're saving the thinking error stuff for me. So uh, I just want to point out a couple of things here that I, I really want to start right at the very bottom. He makes a comment that's a, just a gross over-exaggeration of truth. I guess it feels good to put it all into words and to own all that I have done. That's step one. Mm -hmm. The fact that you get an opportunity to put it all on paper, to for the first time tell your story from day one when this thing started to exist in our life to the, to, to the current date, however many years that is, however many years that was. In my situation, it was, you know, 30, 40 years, something like that. I started at a very, very young age. And the idea of putting all this on paper and for the first time telling my story to whoever it was that would listen started with you as my sponsor, but had opportunity to share with my counselor and the, the relief that that generated. He's pointed that out in this email that's yes. saying, I've experienced that. Mm -hmm. I know what that feels like. That's step one. And so welcome to recovery, Sam. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to, you know, a long, long path of recovery with you and hope that you'll find a sponsor and that you'll, you'll take an opportunity to explain your whole entire story rather than just this small little email to demonstrate all that's gone on mm -hmm. in your world mm -hmm. because that's where it starts. And then the second piece of it that he says, he says, I don't know why it was that I reached out, but I just, it just, I just felt like I needed to. That's the second really most important thing of recovery is a network of folks that we can reach out to mm -hmm. and connect with. That's what he's done here. He's reached out to us and said, hey, I need help. 
But there's going to be some people in his own world, some close people, some family. It'll be a sponsor at some point in time. It'll be a variety of different things. And if he can remember to reach out, those are two things I think that right off the top uh, that, that, that he'll find some success just by simply emailing us and, and reaching out in those ways. Mm-hmm. And, and I definitely make sure those are safe people to reach out to. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, though that, that is one of the biggest key things for me. Uh, was that reaching out component? You know, Correct. once I started doing that, you know, I, 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 there's no way I could escape it. Right. I mean, Gary has this magical sense that's just in tone of voice or words sure. or whatever. It's like, sure, really, <laughs> really, because right. you know, I'd be, he's like, "How are you doing today? I'm okay." Really, you just don't <laughs> want to come across. And then it's like, and then it's like, exactly. You know, I had that sigh, and, and then it would just kind of flood out, um, yeah. and and not. Don't be afraid uh, to, to reach out and say, I'm having a bad day yeah. and this is why I'm struggling and this is why. Because if you don't put it out there, you're not gonna, it's not going right. to be fixed. You're not going to be right. able to work through it. Now, so, let's talk about a couple of things that Sam's really sort of laid out here that we're mm-hmm. all seeing as being problematic. Yes. Well, the first thing I want to point out, and you guys, you guys will be, aware, or be familiar with this, um, there is a pattern to recovery. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the first part of that, and it varies from addict to addict, but everybody has this where you're kind of getting your foot wet. Yes. You know, you're, you're kind of exposed to it. You might go to a couple of meetings, you might look at the workbook and it's actually really common to kind of, kind of tour your way through that, be a tourist for a little while. Right. And then there's a moment of crisis. That's right. Okay. This is a really, really common pattern with addicts. Yes. Okay. There's a moment of crisis and then the decision is made. I'm done. Yep. Okay, and th- and then you move forward. Now, my own story, I um I was busted in two th- in the summer of two thousand eleven for having an affair, and I've shared this on the podcast before, and I kind of experimented with the. I mean, I didn't go to a therapist, but I did look up the twelve steps, and you know, and I talked to some clergy members, and and I wasn't I wasn't completely honest about everything that I was dealing with, but. For a good six to eight months, I was really doing my best with what I had to to find my way out of this and kind of sure. fell into the trap of, oh, I think I think maybe I got this beat. And then, uh, like our, our listener, you know, slipped, and then I was in deeper than I'd ever been before. And that's right. actually when I gave up on myself, right. for real, you know. And then it took, it was, it was almost two years, about a little more than a year and a half, two years before in the spring of... 2013 right that i hit my crisis moment and there's some language in here that i find really really encouraging where he's he's talking about um let's see cut me again devastating to the bring i bill i see now that i am powerless to simply float through life controlling things on my own and i'm ready to go through real treatment to maintain my family I love the language there. I love the commitment. I remember telling my wife, I remember her asking me, what is it? So what is it you're going to do now? When I finally told her really everything I was dealing with and she had her explosion, she said, so what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm I'm no longer going to live like this. I said, I'm going to do this for me no matter what it takes. Even if that means that I'm living in my parents' basement all by myself and we're divorced and another man is raising my children, I'm, I'm done. I'm not living like this anymore. And she, she, you know, we separated for a little while and she kind of watched me, right? you know, to kind of see what I was doing. So I love the language here. I love the dedication. I really, really hope that you've, you've hit your rock bottom and you're now committed to do some real work and some real change. Right. Just remember that you have to change for you. That That's kind of the, the worrisome part of that last part there is he's like, I'm ready to go through real treatment to maintain my family. Mm-hmm. He needs to make the focus on him. The family part will come along as yes. long as you're doing the work. Yeah. I actually want to, I want to add something to that as well mm-hmm. because he starts off with one word that sticks out to me every time. Caught. Yeah. I got caught. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm the only one sitting at this table that didn't get Correct. Caught. caught. Yes. Okay. And uh, it's been my experience in working with any addict is, is that when an individual has been caught, they want to, 
they want to shed light on just the piece that they got caught, caught for, busted for, for mm-hmm. right? That's exactly what I did. And I think that's what, what, what happens. And so, you know, it, it's no surprise to me at all that that uh, our listener has gone through this experience because what's, what happened was is he got busted and, and, and only wanted to shed light on just that little piece for mm-hmm. which he was busted for instead of really addressing the overall problem. And I'm going to tell you right now that until you actually work through the notion of, now, now it took me a little while myself, even though I came to see a counselor, I was not caught. Mm-hmm. My wife knew nothing of it at that point in time, but I was an absolute mess. And I was interested in seeing if I could figure out what was going on in my life and what was troubling me. And when he said that I was an addict, I thought he was crazy. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I went a very long period of time unwilling to do the work necessary to find some peace and recovery. Yeah. Even though I wasn't caught, it took me a long time to realize. And so it was my next relapse that I said, okay, my life sucks and I don't Mm -hmm. want to live this way anymore. So I arrived essentially at the same place that you had as well. But I want to be really careful of that word caught, because mm-hmm. what it really translates to is is that I'm only willing to do this amount of work. I'm not willing right. to do anything beyond yeah, yeah. that. You, you've yeah. got to be willing to accept the idea that this problem is probably way bigger than even I know. Exactly. Yeah. Sort and of I'd, the iceberg kind yeah. of view of things, right? Yeah, and and realize that I'm... I'm not seeing things clearly enough to really understand what I've gotten myself into. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah, that's a I mean it's really time excellent. to yeah. throw open the all the, the shutters, open the windows, start mm-hmm. doing a deep cleaning yeah. of the house. Exactly. You know, and start saying, Okay, it's not just it's not just this little spot in the corner it's, that's it's the problem. Everything. It's yeah. everything and start examining things. Yeah. Um yeah. I want to address something else he says that I that these are words okay. that stand out to me. He sure. said I felt like that I had beaten it. Oh, no, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to share with you, Sam, my last relapse. It yeah. was uh, March Madness, and I was traveling, and uh, we were, you know, I think I was 20-plus months into my recovery of clean time. Things were going well, and uh, I, like you, felt like I had beaten it. And so I, uh, I, there was a safety plan in place for whenever I traveled that meant that the TV had to be, had to be out of my room or dis, uh, disabled. Mm-hmm. That was the safety plan. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying to my uh, to, to the place I was staying, no, I would like the TV put back in my room because I want to thumb through the channels and want to watch I want to watch March Madness. Well, March Madness is on five or six different channels, which means that I had to scroll through a variety of different mm-hmm. channels. And I came across something on public uh, on television. It wasn't a movie channel or anything like that that instantly caught me and that I could not let go. And that was my last relapse. So at any point in time that we feel like that we have it beaten, we're in trouble. Oh, for that sure. Is, that is fertile soil for I, this addiction to come back. Yeah, complacency I, is our enemy. Right. Now, I try to choose my words very carefully. Sure. And I keep the swears to a minimum because when I use them, <laughs> I want them to carry a lot of weight. Sure. But I learned that I cannot approach this problem with any degree of arrogance because it has always kicked my ass. <laughs> 100% of the time. Yeah, and and has done so for years and years exactly. and years of my life. So even now, even with 10 years of recovery, if I approach this with any kind of pride or hubris or the idea that I've got it beaten or I'm better than that, I am done. Absolutely. That goose is cooked. There's yeah. no question about it. That's been my experience as well. Mm-hmm. It was just simply March Madness. Yeah. I thought that I was doing well. Life was treating me well. I was mo- I was uh, sponsoring individuals. I was mentoring for our, for our common counselor. I was doing a variety of things that everything mm-hmm. seemed like it was so well. And one simple little thing on a TV channel uh, tripped me up so fast and that was it. That's all it took. So the point being is, is that whenever we feel like we've gotten a beat, we're in trouble. Yeah. We're absolutely in, in trouble. In fact, it kind of leads into something else he said, sure. where he said he slipped and then he was right back in the rabbit hole. Just... And, I've, and I've often stopped and thought, if I relapse, because I know I have the potential to do it, right? where does that put me? What does that look like? Do I go on a... A binge? On a secret binge for right. however many weeks. and All then, is lost and kind then, of a thing. And then just wander off somewhere and disappear. Because if it puts me right back where I was, that's where I'll be. That's where yeah. I'll be. And, and I, I don't want to go there. I will tell you that that is not true recovery. Mm-hmm. My experience is, is and, and, and I remember my first couple of relapses. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, and there were binges associated with that. Mm-hmm. But when I was able to let go of that and get back get back on the recovery path, if right. you will, 
what I found was is the next relapse, it was much easier for me to say, I'm not going to binge. I'm going to get right back on the recovery path because sure. this is the life I want. Yes. And, and that's the key to it is, is what is the life that you, Sam, exactly. what is the life that you want? And once you find the life that you want, which is, is it in redu- is it in recovery or is it in addiction? And if it's in recovery, then you'll do whatever you have to do to get back to the, yeah. path the recovery. And I really, really hope, I really hope that if it ever, that, it, that I, that's where I would go. I really do. Yes. Well, and, and I think I would, but I still, I'm not going to be taking any chances. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, it definitely sounds like he needs to start implementing first order changes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. First one probably being get rid of Reddit. I mean, if that's where you're, you're, sure, you're sure. circling down the toilet drain, let's get let's get rid of that yeah. one, um, because that's clearly your kryptonite. Yeah, uh, get away from that. You know, take you know, do a really in depth evaluation because I'm sure there's more than just Reddit that's your kryptonite. What else is right. is it? Right. Because I mean, we the number of uh, groups that we've set through, you know. Everyone's different. You know, there's some people that, you know, they, they jump on and they're looking at basketball scores and then it gets them over mm-hmm. to YouTube because now they're watching basketball clips and, oh, there's this stuff, something zips on the side. So they click on that mm-hmm. and eventually it gets yeah. them back to, you know, their their drug of choice. What they don't know is, is that their mind has literally programmed yeah. those steps. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of this is definitely unconscious that's right and it's because you've trained your brain you know our brains are definitely they're smart they want the quickest easiest way to absolve pain or stress or whatever and they know hey if i can get you from here to there that gets us to that point where we're going to be we calm and we're going to yeah. numb out and we're not going to feel this pain and so those are the things you got to be aware of to to get away, you know, and back to you, there was a comment, you know, uh, half measures don't advance. Oh, yeah, that's where I was going next. Yeah, and definitely early on in his his message, there definitely was a lot of half measures, sure. which is no surprise that you're Let's back in the same place. Let's make sure we finish the exact comment because he may not be aware of what that, measure, of what that comment is. Yeah. So say it exactly. So it's it's a it's a well, an well, AA. Yes. It comes from the AA, and they say half measures availeth nothing. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now... I want that this is not a chastisement. This is actually the opportunity for you to recognize this as a gift mm-hmm. that your experience has given you. That's that's the one that's that's something that I took from that 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 first year and a half, two years of my own stuff that really, really stuck with me and really committed me to doing the hard work was number one, I learned very, very clearly that half measures availeth nothing, that it was an all in kind of a thing. That's right. The other thing that I learned is that um, you're only as sick as your secrets and lying, being dishonest about exactly what you're dealing with is going to set you up for failure. Right. So if you've hit your bottom and you're ready to do some real work, then you make sure that you get with your therapist and, and your support group and you do a really, really good first step and leave nothing, leave no stone unturned. Absolutely. Open, honest, and complete. And then remember, remember that half efforts got you to where, where you are at. now. That's right. And they will take you there again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and secrecy is that fertile soil that allows oh, yeah. our addiction just to thrive and grow. Yeah. He makes another point that I uh, that I, we really want to. Now he used a couple of words that I think are relevant. First of all, float. I think you've kind of a, a talked sure. a little bit about that and tourist. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you, Sam, that. We've been at this for a long time, and it's been interesting to see the people who come and go and those who actually uh, start down the path with a workbook. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that Carnes has a book if you're working through the, the steps. There's uh, the G- gentle path. Gentle yeah, path through the 12 is, steps is good. And it's in that gentle path that it's literally a workbook mentality, right? Mm-hmm. It's got pages in there that allow you to answer questions about your step one of uh, powerlessness and unmanageability, where you fill out sheets and sheets of that information. I've seen a lot of people who write nothing in a book. And I, I, it's been my experience that it's impossible. It just is simply impossible to not put pen to paper and make it make it in a successful way through this. Yeah. I've yet to see anybody. Could be, maybe it's just my own, own experience, but I've yet to see anybody who thinks that they can just simply read along and that the that the words on the page are magically going to absorb into their skin and somehow some way that's the path of recovery it mm-hmm. doesn't happen that way no it doesn't i mean we've and we've seen that 
You know, right. there's several times where you see the people that have put in the work, and by the end of you know the group, you know, who can tell? You can tell that they're they're ready to go to the next one. Yeah, and they their lives have changed compared to the people that just kind of put in a little bit of effort. Right. You know, and then you know our therapist is like, oh, well, what what's your answers? Ah, I didn't get to it this week. Work was just too busy. Right. You know, and you see the look on the therapist's face. And, you know, sometimes he calls him out, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, more towards the calling me out on <laughs> him out. But by the end of the process, either one, they've just quit coming. Sure. Mm-hmm. Or two, you can just tell that they're just like, they're really not jazzed. Nothing's really changed. Right. And things are just kind of complacent again. Yeah. And they just did it to get by so that they could placate their wife. Right. right. And if you're working with them in, in a group, I hate to say it, but you'll you'll watch. And then you'll say, all right, I know where we're at on the merry-go-round. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to have to wait till you come back around. That's right. Mm-hmm. We'll catch you here at this point. And yeah. we'll wait till you're ready to, to yeah. when you hit another bottom, and we'll go ahead and give it another yeah. go. But Sam, this is not, I, I don't know if you've gathered from our conversation, but this is not a... Uh, this is not a passive activity. No. no, this just simply isn't a passive activity. So if you if you have in your mind that you know reading a few books or listening to a few podcasts and and uh, some of that sort of stuff is uh, is the magic that's going to stick to your to your very being. And so when you walk out of your room tonight, that you'll be you'll be all healed, if you will. You'll be cured, as we like to say in this in this space, like a ham cured, just like a ham. Yeah. It doesn't happen that way. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't happen that way. And so. Put pen to paper. This is a, this is an opportunity to really evaluate moments of powerlessness and unmanageability in your step one, a real evaluation of 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 a higher power in your life and a willingness to turn your your very life over to this higher power such that you can get the help that you need. It's an evaluation of everything that you've considered in your life in your step four that that maybe you have some shared responsibility in what occurred there. Maybe a relationship with a family member, parents, whatever the case may be. But this is legitimate hard work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and I and I hope that you take it to be that because, and the same thing with your counselor. If it's a CSAT trained counselor, those come with a genuine stack of, of literature that's going to require some real live effort on your part. Real live effort. Yeah. And and it's really helpful. But if you're not willing to do the work, it's it's no good than printed words on a page. I I, I will throw out there. Everything that you said is absolutely correct, but I, I just want to throw this out there: it absolutely works if you do it. Yeah, if that's you do it, exactly right. It absolutely works. Well, I mean, the perfect anal- analogy for this is: okay, you've decided you want to grow watermelons. You got a book on how to grow watermelons, and that's all you've done. You got a book. You're not going to have watermelons. You got to get the seeds. You got to go plant the seeds in there. Got to till the ground. You got to till the ground. Yeah. You got to water them. You have to weed. You have to continue to yeah. to work. On you have to protect that. them. Yeah, you got to protect them. You got to do the work, and then you will get the harvest of that watermelon. That's right. It's at the called end. the law of the harvest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The but work you, that's done in in March, April, May yeah. creates a harvest that happens in September yeah. and October. And so you just got to keep working at it. It's not going to go away. And if you want more watermelons next year, you got to repeat the same that's set right. process. That's absolutely correct. And that's a really a, a really really good way to look at it. Because remember, if you want recovery, it's not a you don't graduate. Mm-hmm. You 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 don't graduate from you know to from yeah. watermelon school. You become a watermelon farmer, and then right. you commit to it. As, and you have to keep doing mm-hmm. the work. And as long as you do the work, you'll reap the reward. Right. Yeah. And the, you know the year next year, year, you'll know a few tricks to do it better mm-hmm. and better, and so on and so forth. So yeah. that when those things that you know, those curveballs that come out of nowhere, you know how to to deal with those. Yeah. Well, I think this is a fantastic discussion. Uh, thank you, Sam, for writing in, first of all. Yes. yes. Can't say enough about that. Uh, we'd love to hear from our listeners. And, yeah. and and as difficult to read your email as it was, thank you so much for writing mm-hmm. in because I know you're you're reaching out from a place of pain and, mm-hmm. and sorrow and suffering, and my heart goes out to you. We <laughs> empathize We empathize a great deal more than you might imagine. Exactly. Yes. When we, when especially when people are hurting or they're just starting their recovery. We all remember what it was like to be there. Right. And we really are pulling for you. So well, and only the very, very best. Yes. For a fellow addict. You're part of our tribe, mm-hmm. you're part of our community, wherever you're living at part of our community. And so just let me extend thanks again to all of our listeners 
for participating in the podcast with us, whether it's just listening to it. Uh, um, man, spread the word. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, reach out to us. We, we'd love to hear from you. We'd like to hear about your successes, the things that you're dealing with. Because, you know, we're all doing our 12th mm-hmm. step. That's right. Right yeah. now. So, you know, share it with people that you know that are struggling. Share it with people that are maybe even in recovery uh, because they may be able to share it to their sponsees or their groups, their church groups. Right. You know, if there's anyone out there that you know that is struggling or is even in just in recovery, it's always good to get new tools and fine tune things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it doesn't have to be just for people that are struggling. Yeah, agreed. Well, let's see. I think I started this one off. So yes. this, this is Gary saying, do the next right thing. And you know, Sam, tonight, this one is specifically for you. Do the work necessary to find the peace that recovery can bring. Amen. And then find the humility in your recovery. <laughs>